Okay, not only do we have the Chikaru uh, coming from Star Magazine with all kinds of gossip, but listen to this, Danny. Coming up also in about oh, an hour, this guy. One thing I love Debbie to work on is I think she is very sensitive. Sometimes parents don't lose graciously, and sometimes hurtful things are said. Like, thank the judges for being a bunch of assholes. <laughs> what the hell was on that? A cat. <laughs> no, they, uh, have you had a chance to see the show yeah. Big Moms and Dads? Uh-huh. Well, one of the coaches is that guy, uh, old uh, Michael Galanas or whatever. What does he coach? Oh, he's very interesting. So we, uh, well, I didn't, but Stench uh, was kind enough to find him. And um, Nice job, Stench. And we we're going to talk to him because... If I you think... need to locate a mo, you go to Stench. <laughs> I found well, him at Jack's house. <laughs> <laughs> Watching The Bachelor and making cookies. Yeah, and by the way, Mr. Mo, you're apparently wrong about something. Nicole. Says who? Nicole. Yes. Hi. Good morning. Hi, go Hi. ahead. I am calling because I was listening to the clip that you guys played last night on the one that was crying and went away from the TV screen and whatnot. Yeah. That's, that, she's not the spy. Right. No, not the spy. She's the stalker. The stalker. Jesse H. is going to be the stalker. Mark my words on this. I am a bachelor expert. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm always going to back Jenny is the Jenny is the spy, and Jenny comes back next week to tell the other girls that she was a spy. Hey, Nicole. Yes. Yeah. yes. Do you have a husband? Yes, I do. Is there any? I also, I also have two children. Is there yeah. anything that your husband watches or does that makes you kind of a question his sexuality, and then b that you don't want to tell any of your friends? Like for example, that he watches The Bachelor and memorizes it. No, he actually. <laughs> the only thing he actually will sit down and watch is Alias on Sunday night. Oh, but is there yeah. anything that he does Hot that check. you don't want? Well, obviously you're not going to tell us, but I mean that you don't want <laughs> others to know, or that kind of makes you suspect. No, I think he. Because it's a rule in my house that my kids go to bed at 8 o'clock every single night except on the weekend. So that's our quality time. And if it's whatever I'm watching on TV in order to spend quality time with me, he'll sit and he'll watch it. But he doesn't on his own just watch anything. Because it scares me sometimes when a guy will tell me he's, he likes trading spaces. Right. Yeah, that's kind of scary. <laughs> or Martha, I know Jack, but you're suspect. I was going to say, Jack, is there anything you do that Sparkles thinks is suspect? <laughs> Everything is suspect. Um, also, we were talking about uh, American Idol because eh, he watched it. Um, and uh, apparently, big upset. The really confident girl was kicked off, right? Uh, here is a little clip from American Idol last night. America has voted, and good news. You are safe this week. I want you to go and join. Right. George, go and join. It's, it's my fault. Okay, because I don't know who he's talking to. That was my fault. It was, uh, they divide them up on, they call you up on stage and they put you in groups. So there were seven last night. So they had a group of three and three on the stage. Three of them being the the uh, three the three black girls that are awesome that are like the best singers in the competition, and then the other three, the redheaded dork kid. Is he still in it? He's still in it. The D- he can't sing. Yeah, the Diane right. girl that's not that good, and the little Hawaiian girl that's not that good. So George was the seventh. This might guy. be like a racist right. thing because that <laughs> that little redhead's not good. Not that's good what at Sam all. Rubin said that that's going to be a big thing in the in the tabloids that it's a race thing. People well, are going to yeah, play the race Yeah, the redheaded card. guy is not good. At all. And then George Huff, everyone seems like George, and he wasn't very good the night before singing Barry Manilow. It just didn't work for him. Right. So yeah, he mangled Manilow. He tells him, all right, you're last. You made it. You're safe. Is go- he white? No, he's a black guy. All right. Well, so he God. told him, go to the top group on stage, but he didn't yeah, point go- to which group. So George immediately goes, and and the three girls start waving him over to their group like, we're the top. Come over here. You're really right. too into this. And he gets over there, and little Seacrest says, wrong group. They're the bottom three. And my wife All took... your chins wiggle when you do that. <laughs> my wife made me sit there and TiVo back and forth through the girls' reactions when they told her because their jaws dropped and these girls were like... They were waving them over like, yeah. here we are, top group, God. come on, baby. It's like, Jack, in boy world, that's the Paris Hilton video you do that right. too. <laughs> do you guys worry you don't have a life? Yes. Yes. That you're like living through all these shows? Yes. Yes. Here's the clip from American Idol. America has voted, and good news, you are safe this week. I want you to go and join, George, go and join the top group tonight, please. On the stage, George. Okay, America, take a look at this. George, I said step into the top group. You're in the wrong group. Please step over here because tonight, this is our bottom three. Fantasia, Jennifer Hudson, and LaToya London, America. Wow. I, it worries me it might be a race thing. 
It worries me that it might be said it's a race thing. I don't think okay, so. The, the redheaded sh- guy should not be there. And yeah. the weird thing is that at the end, normally they ask them, okay, how do you feel? You know, this you could be out of here right now. And they ask the two people that are left. Well, the one girl that got eliminated last night was in a group before, and she got all ghetto and was like, I don't care I what America that. thinks. Right. If, I, if they were like me, I sang as good as I can. And then she got booted last night. So I think it was an attitude thing with her. Here's that. <laughs> I can tell you that the person going tonight in a previous show had the mm. highest number of votes. But tonight, they have the lowest number of votes. Wow. And that person is Jennifer Hudson. Bye-bye. How do we know? Like, yeah. how do we know the votes? Like, who's there? Who's Ryan counting? Ryan Seacrest says so. I mean, where's the, like, wh- who's counting? Who's... Closest margin ever last night, they said. They said. Yes, they said. Uh-huh. Okay, we do a little contest here called Say It and Win. And sometimes the numbers go as high as 18. And the mathematical formulation that goes into counting those votes is quite scientific. I just, they always, uh, anyway. All right, we're going to take a little break. I'm angry. <laughs> Let's talk to Tina real fast, and then we'll get uh, to Bonnie from Star Magazine with all the gossip. Tina, what do you know? Oh, okay. Let me go outside. Okay. This is Tina. She yeah. has some gossip. And she needs to hide. Yes. <laughs> I do, because everyone will hear me. No, I, I work at um, a hotel in Industry Hills. It's called, the, I can't say it, huh? Well, I, well, I, I, if you no. want to keep your job, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I work at a hotel in Industry Hills, and um, <laughs> we, a week before last, Brad Pitt and Anna Jolie stayed in the presidential suites upstairs, um, across from each other. But they used fake names, and they really weren't. Every time we would go to her room or his room, they were always together. Dun, dun, dun. And where was yeah, this? and they're saying that there's nothing going on. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> what, what city? It's in Industry Hills. So. Uh, Industry Hills? You know what's interesting? Tina had to go outside so no one would hear her call a very popular radio station <laughs> and say, my name's Tina <laughs> from the Hotel Industry Hills where ba- Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie stayed. <laughs> Your secret might be out. <laughs> Tina, oh, we, rule. we rule. All right, hold on. Let's check our sources here. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. Hi. Hi. Look, everybody, it's Bonnie from Star Magazine. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Hi. I want to hear more about this. I know. <laughs> about Brad and Angelina. Don't worry, I got her number for you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I did. Right. Of course, she'll be changing her name any second. No. Yeah. But you know what? I actually, and, and you know, I mean, I met Jen and Brad, and they are so nice and such great people and I love them as a couple so please tell me this isn't true well we certainly know that there's a lot of heat on the set uh, Brad and Angelina have an incredibly steamy uh, nude love scene and we've written about that in Star Magazine and apparently she's full frontal nude he's uh, nude from the ba- from the backside so I mean if you're a Brad fan, you're going to want to see this. Yeah, baby. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I'd, uh, my husband all rolling around with Angelina Jolie. Full on naked, too. Yeah, and I she's mean, very sexual. How do you know they're not just actually doing it? I know. And they're editing around it. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, in, in Hollywood, I think they like those. They like to have that out there because that generates so much interest in the movie. I mean, Didn't work case, for Ben and Jen. Oh, that's true. But there was no nude scene. Uh, that's true. true. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? I mean, from everything that you've collected, red, blah, 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 you know, uh, what, what do you think? About Brad and Angelina? Yeah. I think that they are getting along famously. I think there is, is some kind of attraction there. Um, we reported that there were rumors that they were at the Standard Hotel and that they were seen kissing. Now, we could only report that as rumors because we could not confirm it. Uh, they've got a lot in common. They're, cert- you know, they're certainly getting along very well. I can't take a next step. But, you know, he seems so down to earth, and she's a little odd. Yeah, I was thinking that. You know, I, I, that's her image, but uh, we've we've had some dealings with her. I mean, I have in my career, and I've always and I've found her extremely, uh, you know, strong and bright and and very straightforward. Then explain the Billy Bob Thornton thing to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we all have some mis- make some mistakes. <laughs> well, we all have yeah, some yeah, weird moments yeah. in our past. Yeah. But She's now, young. <laughs> what about uh, on the other, the flip side of that? 
What about uh, Brad and uh, the little wife making out with uh, Joey from Friends? That's got to be a case of they're good friends, really good friends, and she was so happy to see them and see him. And maybe she wanted to talk about what's going on with Brad and Angelina. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she has to confide in somebody. Yeah. And certainly not me. <laughs> or, or Matthew Perry. You know, what? he has a tendency to talk. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I would hate for this to happen. But, um, you know, allegedly, apparently, Brad wants to have kids. But this here, Angelina, she only adopts those little crazy kids. No, Cambodian's not crazy. It just starts with a C. Right. Uh, she, yeah, she wants to have more. And she, it does seem she wants like to Jen, go- Jen's got, uh, isn't, it's kind of wavering, doesn't it? Well, I don't think yes, she can get pregnant. That's my... Is that what you think? Well, I don't know. I mean, it seems like... I think know. it's one of those career not wrecking my body stories. See, I think mm-hmm. she can't get pregnant. I don't know. I just don't know about that. I mean, she says she does, but, I mean, she had that opportunity that whole year she was pregnant in the show. Well, that's true. Oh, right, yeah, that's right, true. right. But Angelina doesn't want to have children either. She just wants to adopt them, doesn't she? Because she feels, she, well, but that, hey, if she got married to the right guy, I bet that would change in a second, don't you? I know, but we're all going to be mad at her. Right. <laughs> oh, if she runs I mean, off sure, with everybody him. wants a Cambodian kid, but every now and again, you should have one of your own. Yeah, but you know what? I, I think that it'll wreck her, don't you? I mean, everybody loves Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, she's it's America's big, sweetheart. Yeah, now. yeah I, I think there's a, big publicity fallout if that if that happened, if that truly happened, if there really was romance. Yeah, and I think well, although Tom Cruise did it right. Yeah, he left Nicole. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or whatever. Um, all right. It so could, hey, it could be good for Jen's career then. Yeah, because all of a sudden Nicole took off. Tom hasn't had a hit in a while. Yeah. Now, boy, what about uh, Amarosa? Amorosa, hey, oh, boy, she is a she liar. is a wild one. Now you know we've got some real insight though into her, and we broke this news in Star Magazine. hasn't been anywhere else. It turns out that her father was a convict and that he was murdered. Oh. So I think that goes a long way to explaining yes, why she is. Yes, there are the those issues. Is. See, I think it goes a long way to explaining if she actually did it because she's <laughs> pathological. Yeah, she probably just made up the story. Yeah, and had to either, find it. yeah either the dad's fine or she killed him. Yeah, no kidding. Well, right. she was only seven at the time, so oh, she would well. have had an early. She was start. probably evil back then. Yeah. All right. So when does the new Star Magazine come out? It should be out in your newsstands either today or tomorrow at the latest. It looks good. Brad gets naked Thank with you. Angelina, Jen's worst nightmare. That's the cover. That's there. awesome. I love that. And we love the new look. Yeah, we really Thank do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so can we expect you uh, same time, same place next Thursday? Uh, fantastic. Sounds good to me. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Bonnie, and I'll call Thank you back you. with this chick's number. <laughs> oh, please. I please. will. <laughs> that Tina spy from some... <laughs> that unidentified woman. All right. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Jamie Danny. Bye. Bye. All right, we're going to take our last Angelina Brad gossip. All right. Oh, my God. You know uh, Robert, our marketing director? Yes, I do. Well, he loves Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, he loves what this whole town is supposed to be about and all that crap. And so he wants to start a new radio station. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. With 24-hour gossip called (laughs) K-Dirt. I like it. That's our Robert. Always thinking. Always, always thinking, thinking. Always moving. Mm-hmm. Here is Matt. Hi, Matt. Hey, good morning. Hi. Hey. Matt, you sound like way too burly to have gossip. Uh, well, I'm actually under the weather. I'm trying to get over some bronchitis and stuff. Okay. Um, wanted to let you guys know that, ba- that you know Brad Pitt, Angelina and Julie, they're both very respectable people. They've both been working very closely together with the anticipated 21st Century Fox production of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Now, since they are going to be playing a married couple, that would be why they have been seen with one another very closely. They have (laughs) been shooting in the industry area. And other than that, I'd rather not release my sources to state where I know this information. I do know that they are working very closely together together. I myself have been over in the area of Century City and know what has been going on and stuff like that. Well, first of all, why are you talking to us like we're tards? Well, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I thought he's very he was, like. Uh, I thought he was talking to us very formal. Uh, well, formally tards. Yeah, uh, well dressed tards. <laughs> so you have nothing. Uh, as, well, as far as like the gossip and stuff like that. 
All I can say is that they have been working very closely together. They're doing a movie. We got that part, of they course. Are, they are doing a movie. But as far as them, you know, being in a room together naked and such, more than likely only on set. Only with them in character, not something where they're doing on their own. So what you were saying, Matt, is that you don't think there's no hanky-panky. No hanky-panky, nothing nothing like that at all whatsoever. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, Dench, did this you hear just this, Matt? In. Matt says well, no. The secret location he's talking about is the old out-of-business Ikea in the industry. I know they were filming That's there right. last week. That's right. Ikea went out of business? Don't ever tell me that. The one out there did. Oh, because there's a shiny new one in the 909. I've been to (laughs) it. And they have a restaurant. Owned by the richest man in the world. I love that guy. All right, well, Matt, boy, uh, we sure are glad we took this phone call because we learned nothing. (laughs) Hey, yeah, the next time nothing happens, make sure to call in. No problem. (laughs) But we do hope you get to feeling better. That crap's going around. Yeah, thanks much. All right, and, uh, you know, like when you cough up some of those lung cookies, just take a look at it. (laughs) Oh, yum. (laughs) <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you got to look. You got to look. Sure. Yeah, you, if something yeah, comes absolutely. up, you have to know what it was. Yep, you have Could to look. Could be your pancreas. Um, we are going to call, hopefully she'll answer, this woman who uh, narrowly escaped her life. She is, uh, what, Cel- Celeste, I think is her name. She um, was hit in the back of her car, mm-hmm. and the, the car pushed her car onto the railroad tracks. Yikes. And in 20 seconds, a train came, and she jumped out. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So um, she is uh, on the phone with us here in a moment, hopefully, and also a lady that was attacked and, and fought off an alligator that dragged her in the water. What? That almost never happens. They do that death roll and you're done. Yeah, they put uh, dragged her into the water, but she has lived as well. And then the big old homosexual uh, gay guy, whatever, uh, judge that, um, that was on. What was that show called again? I got it here. Showbiz Moms and Dads. Showbiz Moms Which and rocks. Dads. Now, he is... You guys have to strap yourself in for this guy because he yeah. is alive and well. Yeah, uh, Bobby Trendy is a lumberjack. Oh my God, we should guy. have a, a flamboyant off. There's a couple people we can invite, and there's a couple people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys have seen. I mean, pretty much you can guess what it's about, but the, the showbiz moms and dads, right? On Bravo, it it's is awesome. Yeah, it's an amazing, um, it's- yet terrifying. <laughs> Uh, it, it, what it does is it follows these families that are, are trying to basically have their kids become uh, Britney Justin Spears. Timberlake. Right, yeah. right, there you go. Kind of like Britney Spears' mom did, I guess, but only um, different. So uh, what Maybe it, not different, though. Maybe that's exactly how Britney Spears got started. Yeah, I don't know. She was a mouseketeer. Yes, she was. She's been was. doing it forever. Um, so one of the people uh, on the show that I really liked, and I thought he was um, fantastic, his name was Michael, and I believe he trains uh, the little pageanteers. Yeah. Um, so we have him on the phone. Neat. I know you've wanted to talk to him all day. Yeah, Michael. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very, very well. I'm glad that you liked me. I do like I'm you. I'm sure that if I met you, I would like you guys as well. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being, but I'm across the country. I'm in Orlando, Florida, where I'm a performer at Walt Disney World, and I run around 47 pageants for girls all the way up to the Miss USA and the Miss Teen USA level. I don't know if you just saw Miss USA. It was out, actually out in your neck of the woods in Hollywood. Hollywood and Highland. At the Kodak, Kodak. Theater. Yep. Right. I'm the state director, actually, for Vermont, um, and we won Congeniality this year, so we were kind of thrilled. Wow, Congeniality. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there are nice girls that pursue pageants, and Vermont is living proof of that. Right. Now, can I make a personal commentary on, on something I've noticed? Yeah, that's what life's about. Everybody has an opinion, and I think if, as long as they're given it in a kind or objective manner. Well, then never mind. <laughs> 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 no, I was just going to say... Compared to the way I have seen you on TV and the way your voice sounds, now you sound a little more butch today. Oh, okay. So basically you're, you're questioning my sexual orientation? Oh, no, I have no questions about your sexual well, yeah, orientation. I'm not on it, but that's cool. I think that everybody has an opinion to know if somebody's, what someone's sexual orientation is. And um, how is that relevant to the pageants? I guess I don't know, but <laughs> if you want to make it relevant, rock on, dude. Oh, wow. Smack down by Michael. Nose, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Michael, first of all, <laughs> oh, have you seen that toes on the nose, bros? Say that again. It's no. it's the, the old Navy commercial drives us nuts. All right, uh, Michael, so how did you get involved in pageants? You know. 
when I was in high school, a lot of the girls with whom I went to school competed um, for pageants, and I sort of always would go, and I'd serve as a judge or an MC, and I'm a singer by nature, mm. so I, I'm a performer. So I kind of went, and then, uh, you know, after five or six years of going, I thought, well, you know, I think that I could direct these pageants. I saw the benefits all around. I saw the benefits the girls reaped. I saw the benefits of the directors, the producers, and I just thought it was a venue that I was kind of well-suited for because it sort of encompassed all that I love, performing arts, uh, stardom, uh, pulling together judges, finding a venue, finding the... Let me ask you something, Michael, uh, and uh, congratulations on your passion for this. Um, But what possibly good comes out of what I feel like kind of is torturing this little four-year-old Emily, I mean, by her mom? She does cry. Don't all four years cry, four-year-olds cry? When you well, beat them. Well, hold on. I want you just to listen to this little clip right here. Oh. Emily loves the costume. She likes this outfit. She enjoys wearing it. She likes doing the pigtails and having them up like that. It just sometimes hurts when you put the wire in. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Suck it up. Thumb, 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 thumb. It's okay. Wow. It hurts a little when you put the wire in. I don't know, Michael. That Debbie's nuts. What I think I what I think you just showcased for me over the radio is a, a portion. There's one pageant that's out there, and they needed a costume. So little Emily was um, a Pippi Longstocking. So in order to get her braids to sort of fling out like Pippi's did, she simply, when they were braiding her hair, they put a piece of wire All in. right, but Michael, you don't think that her mother, Debbie, is a little nutty cuckoo? She spends thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on dresses. And, I mean, she's spray-painting a four-year-old and putting mascara on a four-year-old and doing all this stuff and and like she wants to win and she's crazy i would never sit in judgment of anybody's uh, parental skills and i think that what debbie does is simply because she loves her daughter and it was really cool because i was at a pageant maybe a month or two ago and emily won a five thousand dollar scholarship and it really was worth it and it was relevant and it made everything make sense to me and i think that sometimes these documentaries and shows showcase probably the not so right kind element well, because, I agree with that. because they and paid I thousands of dollars for a trophy my cousin actually is was in the olympics for cross-country skiing and i can remember growing up with my cousin he and i are the same age i remember growing up he was so not wanting to go to rehearsals at four o'clock in the morning or practices or endurance training or strength training but my aunt and uncle saw that he had what it took. So at that point, maybe when he wasn't old enough to make a decision for himself, my aunt and uncle made it. And it, was, it, it actually panned out because he was in the Olympics. And this is an experience that nobody can ever take from him. I don't know, were you guys ever in the Olympics or anything major like that? I I've, was. I've never done anything major with my life. <laughs> were you a gymnast? Well, I, I don't know. Did that Partridge family, did the Partridge family do anything for you? Count as doing something important with my life no Olympic team but I think they had a really cool bus well, yes, yes, they did. Danny, yeah. Uh, a couple of really fabulous hairstyles sort of emerged from the budget. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I feel personally responsible for some of those dudes. Well, you, you know what? You have a t-shirt that, 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 that says that? What? I, I make T-shirts too. Maybe I can make you a shirt that said "I love the Partridge Family." Or mm, boy, he has no idea, does he? That's <laughs> bitchy. Absolutely no idea. But I think that sometimes that's better. I think. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, you know, because I must tell you that Danny Bonaducci is Danny Partridge. Oh, he is. Yes, yeah. he is. I mean, Rock yes, on. I am. No Rock on. Toes <laughs> on the nose, bros. Danny from the Partridge Family was questioning my sexual. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> once, once again, I must point out, I really don't have any question at all about your sexual preference. You don't. Uh, hey. just commenting that maybe you thought otherwise. Wait, let me, let me just give you this. Keep in mind, Danny was on a show with Mario Lopez and Dick Clark wearing a dress. Absolutely. <laughs> but I like that show that, that he's on with Thank that. you very and much. It certainly adds an element to the show and a personality and, and his, mm. his spontaneity and his honesty. We're going to miss it. Yep. He, were, he is a necessary component for that show. Well, thank you. And I want you to know I do have no questions, but I would like your sexual preference to be me. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've never dated a redhead. <laughs> I love Michael. What's one thing that you'd share with me, Danny, that would be awesome, that would rock my world? Uh, oh, boy. I, I don't know if, you, if you'd care that <laughs> much. It gets creepy. But Bobby Trendy was at my house for dinner last night. 
That guy's a bitch. Yeah. So what are you suggesting? A three-way? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, we actually we want to have a fabulous off. Like a flamboyant, yeah, like, you know, you take on Bobby Trinity because I hate that guy. You know what? I think Mike wins. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I Michael. Would, I, I think I missed my calling with the whole queer eye, straight guy thing. I, I would could do that. Well, Maybe get these guys ready for a pageant or something. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. And Bravo is actually in the office building where we work. We should recommend that, getting a straight guy ready for a pageant. No, after all the, the queer eye for the straight guy episodes, after all of them have completed the little boot camp training with these guys, right. they should all compete in a pageant. And I could be the coach on step step turns on proper pageant etiquette filling out the application getting their talent ready well you know I they're doing the queer of all trades for they're that doing show. uh queer eye Ew. for the straight girl you actually could that's coming I up have next no desire to be on that show <laughs> yeah wow. cuz we get bitchy yeah exactly. <laughs> queer eye for the queer guy and i would like to be on that one not okay. that you're queer or anything no cuz no no, no. no. Danny knows what I am. Ask Danny. <laughs> he is fabulous. That's what he is. <laughs> All right, so Michael, going back to that, there is this family that lives in a trailer, and uh, and and we've been following this. This Sean, Shane, Sean Smith, yeah, Shane, Shane, Shane. He lives down here in, in Florida. Actually, can you go help him? He's gonna turn out like you. <laughs> What's that mean about my friend Michael? <laughs> Do you see that happening, Mike? Oh. I think that that was probably the meanest comment made today, <laughs> and I have no comments. Why? Why? Okay, I want you to help him. I said he's on the way to be you. Don't you like who you are? I do, but that's not the energy that you made. The yeah, uh -huh. he's right. Yeah. He's sorry. right. You <laughs> say you're sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. Michael? I was born at night, not last night. <laughs> <laughs> I apology because you don't mean it. I do mean it, Michael. <laughs> you're you're at a Disney World lying. Michael, here's Pinocchio. what I'm worried about. I'm worried about that his his fat trailer park trash mom is teaching him how to dance. Oh, well, that was a much okay. nicer version. Now, what is concerning you? The part that perhaps his mother's overweight? Is that the part that's concerning you? Know that I can see the wheels on the trailer. That you can see the wheels on the trailer? Yes. And you're sitting in judgment of those who, who live in humble abodes? Uh, wow, he won't hey, back up. I love him. Hey, what's going on by you? There's like uh, sirens and stuff. Yeah, I'm on fire, girl. Because <laughs> you're a flamer. <laughs> it was funny when I said it, then when you said it, it was redundant. <laughs> but you know what? It's all I had. It's all I had, Michael. It's it. You're funny. I I'm like not you. saying another word. The no, homo's way sharper than I no, am. You're amazing. You should have your own show. You're awesome. You should. And what would we call the show? I'm not going to tell you because you'll top me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm loving? I'm loving the fact that I'm talking to da this Danny guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always love it, too. I yeah. do. I, my, all of a sudden, my energy and kind of changed because I'm being honest. I had no idea that it was he. <laughs> and he it is. is. <laughs> it is I. <laughs> Wow, it is he, it is I, yes, the Danny is, Partridge, I. yes, yeah, wow. Uh, I love me some Danny Partridge. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, I'm going to break boy. me off a piece of that Danny Partridge. Boy, oh, hey, yeah. Michael, you think you're ever going to come to L.A.? We'd love to have you We'd here. We'd love yeah, to have I, you here. I was just in L.A. for three weeks. Yeah. Working with working with a pageant. So yeah, I'm out there all the time. Well, we'd love to have you in if you're ever here cuz you certainly can do a smackdown on me and that pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're going on vacation in July. You should sit in. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So we can come back to again? no jobs at all. <laughs> when she goes on vacation, can I serve as her uh Alternate. Sure, but I go with her, so you're going to be here by yourself. Well, it'll yeah, just yeah. get creepy because you two will act all foofy to each other. I'll, I'm kind of well, hot I'm, for Michael. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how we'd act. I guess sometimes when you meet somebody in person, the dynamics change. Yeah. I'm cute. And you know Danny's thing is uh, you cut down one tree, doesn't make you a lumberjack. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is, does Danny, is Danny still kept his, his sort of... Svelte figure. I know <laughs> doing some surgery type work and all I'm, that jazz. How I'm a perfect size seven. You're a perfect size seven. Uh -huh. Do they they say that once you start all those surgeries that it becomes like an addiction? Danny, has that happened with you? No, but I'm still taking the Vicodin, and the surgery was nine days ago. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was your latest sort of under the knife procedure? You know what? I haven't done a single thing since the show's been canceled. But uh, the other got day, got a tooth pulled and got Vicodin. The other day, we were talking about putting breasts on my back for for the swan. 
Uh, yeah. You know what? You're still too facially gifted to be on this one. <laughs> I love I love Michael. Oh, Michael. Yeah. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michael, we need to go. We, and we uh, love you, and we want you to come back. So she can win a pageant. Okay, uh, go yeah, get Yeah, absolutely. And we will continue to watch the show, Showbiz Moms and Dads. It's on Bravo, and it's our friend Michael. Can we call you again? You can call me whenever you'd like. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, but just don't, you know, do that thing where it doesn't make me look funny. Okay. <laughs> right. if, you call, if you call, it might take me to answer three or four rings, but if Danny calls, it would be on the first ring. Oh, nice. yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. All right, bye, Michael. See you later. <laughs> Emily loves the costume. She likes this outfit. She enjoys wearing it. She likes doing the pigtails and having them up like that. It just sometimes hurts when you put the wire in. Or... It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Suck it up. Thumb. Thumb, 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 thumb. It's okay. Walk it off. You know, I know we didn't really get to talk to him about it because he's way too fun. Um, that, that pageant crap is just... You know, I, I've never seen it that I that I care for it. That's for sure. Well, what gets me is, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, is that the only people in these pageants, as far as the audience, are the the parents that paid. Right. You know, and it's like this huge entry fee and all these dresses and all this stuff, and then what they get is a trophy. I mean, they paid a lot of money for a trophy, and, and you know, this little girl, uh, the one that's crying there, she's four years old. Right. And um. She is mystic tanned. Right. That was weird. I saw it. That was really weird. You know, it's just crazy. Um, Jack, do you also have the one that, uh, let's see here. I'm sorry. Number um, four. Now, here's the weird thing. She is talking about, you have to keep this in mind. The mom is talking about three-year-olds and four-year-olds mm-hmm. when you hear this clip. Cool. She won a world talent. It's just the, the she should have gotten the grand. She, should have gotten the grand. she looked better in beauty. She beauty. modeled better. I'm just so sick of that family because they win things they don't deserve. And yeah. she did not deserve this because Emily danced circles around her. I'm so pissed I can't see straight. Her tan is terrible. Her makeup is terrible. Her modeling is terrible. One thing I'd love Debbie to work on is I think she is very sensitive. Sometimes parents don't lose graciously and sometimes hurtful things are said. Like, thank the judges for being a bunch of assholes. (laughs) Two things. Wow. (laughs) First of all, her tan is terrible. Her makeup is terrible. The little girl is three or four. Yeah, four. Sorry. Four. Her tan is terrible. Her makeup is terrible. She's four. That's, yeah, her, her tan is terrible and her makeup's terrible because she shouldn't have one. Yeah, you should be saying, oh, my God, you're coloring so good. Yeah, exactly. She exactly. uses big, fat crayons. <laughs> wow, I came dangerously close to saying the F word. You did? Yeah. I mean, that little girl, she should be on the floor with the coloring book and big, fat crayons. Not worrying about her tan and makeup at four. I'm right. sorry. I'm just like, oh, my God. And the other thing I realized. Yeah. Is that Michael is a real live uh, thing from Saturday Night Live? Remember the special or what? Remember? Oh, Stuart Smalley. He is the real live Stuart Smalley. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And damn it, people like me. Hurtful things should not be said. I liked him. Isn't he the real live? I mean, yes, he scares me. <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, the pageants. Uh, anyway. I would never do it. I'd probably put my kid in there. Sorry, Jack, I didn't know we were taking a break. I'd probably put my kid in, like, one for fun, for sport, you know, uh, like the know. the little town. Like, in our town, we have a little Miss Heron. Right. You know, my mom wouldn't let me be in it, but I'm... Um, what okay. happens if you don't win Miss Heron? <laughs> you are got to be scarred for I life. Can't, okay, can I tell you something? Because I was the ugliest damn kid in the world. You know, the big old buck teeth and the awful perm and all that stuff. I think my mom didn't put me in there because she knew I was ugly. That's just sad. Well, think about it. Why else wouldn't you put your kid in there? Because people like that do it. No, no, no. But this is like a town, a local one. This isn't like I'll go out and get crazy. I I, think she knew I was ugly. (laughs) I'm sorry, but I'm trying to get you out of feeling like that. But you won't let me. If you saw the pictures, you'd understand. I have seen the pictures. You were hideous. (laughs) Here's what we got going on, my friends. We are talking about pageant talk and also pageant talk. Pageant talk. You're on the air. I know. And uh, also, Stench handed me this, and I think it's very interesting because I have this problem. I'm an addict. Really? Uh Uh-huh. All right. I don't feel so alone. (laughs) I I have so much of this, I'm full. Wow. (laughs) Just like your pills? Yep. Yep. Uh, By the way, I got a memo on that. They don't think that sounds very nice. Well, you know what? (laughs) 
I think it was funny. I thought so, too. But the truth of the matter is, I take two pills. One in the morning, one at night. Well, but the truth of the matter is, who cares? They it did, was, apparently. I got the same memo. But to me, it was funny, and uh, all my friends were like, oh, my God, that was so funny. Danny said he'd take so many pills he's full. It's a, this is a show, and I don't Just know if they so you get know, that. Just so you know, I thought that line was so funny, I used it on TV last night. Yeah, yep. so I don't, it's it's interesting how people judge what comedy is. But anyway. Don't judge. Listen to Michael. I know, and maybe they shouldn't judge what they think is funny, because <laughs> uh, they haven't made me laugh. <laughs> you got a little bit of a point there. <laughs> now, Jack, he makes me laugh. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, all right, here is the attic part. Um, a study says that chocolate, pizza, and other junk foods are addicting. In this study, they did scans on people's brains after having the fast, having the fast. Having them fast. Right. Duh. <laughs> Sorry, just reading it. Didn't know I had to Not read well. it. Not well. It says having the fast. It does? Yes. Nice job writing, stench. Duh, just throw in your curve, make sure you could read. <laughs> no green M&Ms, it's in my rider, just making sure you're looking. Hey, that's not funny. <laughs> they then had them describe their favorite food and put a cotton swab on their tongue. And uh, uh, shut up, I know tongue. And that had uh, been soaked in that food. And I guess the brain waves, like uh, it, it, they found that the brain activity of the test subjects was equal to that of a cocaine addict thinking of their next snort of coke. You know what's good about that? Cool. One of the top things on the list of that addiction is pizza, and I'm a pusher. Yeah, I know, but I also got a memo that I can't say Fiorini's anymore. Did you really? Yeah. God, you're <laughs> sucking, too. I'm getting all kinds of memos about your ass. Maybe you should come to a meeting. <laughs> Why would I do that? They're all mean to me and send memos. If I don't go, they can just send the memos to you guys. Because he has that other kind of meeting he has to be at. That's <laughs> right. It's very important. The one where he's so full. You can't say that. <laughs> really, you can't say that? You can't say where else I get full? <laughs> Nothing about my fullness. Just stop getting getting memos for me or whatever, you know? I'm like, oh, I don't care. Leave me alone. Danny, what, what am I going to do? What's that you can't say? I know. Fiorini's can't say it. Can't say that. Can't say that you're so, uh, you take so many pills, you're full. Can't say that. It's not funny. Can't say body parts. I'm not going to. You can't sucker me in. <laughs> Areola. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's very busy here. Oh, and memos about the boss yesterday. Oh, yeah, the boss yesterday. I, I don't know if y'all heard that. I can't believe how mean you guys were to him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that? You know, all I got to do is hit the number seven on my cell phone. <laughs> and you can hear a little of that memo. Y'all might want to take note of this show because it uh, could be our last. Yeah, I don't know if you heard yesterday's show with the boss, but I don't know. I was just trying to be funny. <laughs> Me too. Okay, Sometimes yesterday I kind of swing meant and it. you miss. <laughs> no, it was funny. You guys were funny. You were just mean. <laughs> You and you party? are you're what, what are you today? Who are you today? I'd like to know <laughs> this bus, person. I'm the bus driver. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? He's the bus driver. Really? Cuz you know, I happen to know a few things that you've said <laughs> are not even being funny. Or the commercial that I printed. <laughs> right. Oh, Jack, where is that? That's about our boss. Yeah, what about that? You produced it. It was funny. It was under the veil of humor. <laughs> Maybe right. not nice humor, but right. humor. Now, if I were you, I think and that I'm put us over the edge. <laughs> I wouldn't play the commercial. If we play, well, we can't play the commercial anymore. Right. Why? That's my suggestion. We got a memo. Right. I didn't get that memo. Play the commercial. We I didn't got get a memo. It. Hey, excuse me. I didn't get that memo, and I'm a big part of this show. We got it to give to you. We can't do that anymore. Well, I didn't see it. I gave it to you. I didn't see it. It's in your stuff. Where? Right there. I didn't see it. <laughs> what the hell is happening now? You guys Call are going crazy. Calling our boss. <laughs> He's not here. Oh, where is he? He's in London. Oh. Hello. Hey, oh. B Rad, you're on the air. Hey guys, what's going on? B-Rad. How are you, boss? Now, did did I get? I because I didn't see it. Did we get a memo that we can't play that commercial anymore? Because I think it's very funny. What commercial? Um. Oh. The one Jack made. <laughs> 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 oh, you haven't heard it? I'm. A, I guess I'm a little in the dark. Refresh me. <laughs> hmm. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, nothing. So exactly. have you been? I've been great. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. I got some um, some email that maybe I wasn't so kind to my boss. So I just, you know, today is like be nice to your boss day, and I just want to say hey. Hey, uh, that's a nice phone call. Thank yeah, it's you. actually bring your kid to work day. Well, whatever. Be nice to your boss. <laughs> Earth Day. I don't know. Anyway, but so everything's good. Everything's fantastic. I, How are you guys doing? I am. We're good. I didn't say one bad word today. You didn't? Nope. Well, you know what? I am just getting in the car and actually leaving for the airport, so I hadn't heard the show. So I, I'm I'm going on your word, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say any bad no, just, words. Just going okay. on your word oh. makes me laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything bad, and I think that we've had a really fun and compelling show. Yeah, this wasn't it, but we had one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, very nice, Brad. All right, well, well uh, thank you, Mr. Samuel. All right, so go ahead and like listen to that Ryan Seacrest or something because we're going to do something right here. <laughs> Don't do it. You guys have a good day now. You, you too, too ha- sir. Happy Bosses Day. Uh, adios. Okay, bye. Love our boss. Love him. Love him and respect and admire. Right. Jack, uh, can you play that thing that stench made? You know, you run into some real zeros in Southern California, like Brad here. First of all, I love you. Please don't be funny. Titillating uh, is the word that shouldn't be on the air. So, you know, if we're talking about the FCC thing, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, is, it is currently uh, evolving every day. Mm-hmm. It's guys like Brad that give the term zero a bad name. It's frankly, it's ridiculous. I think it's a ventilation thing. I thought I'd dress better than Roy. Right. Getting close to the edge. Hello. Please don't be funny. Stench did that. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Did not. Michael Roberts. What's your middle name? <laughs> Michael Stench Roberts. My name is Jacka Hine Jr. <laughs> the third. That's one. That's when you know you have quite the reputation, by the way. <laughs> uh, we have the, this big yellow button that's for people that uh, cuss or whatever. It's called a delay button, and then it somehow miraculously takes away the bad words that were said. Right, for three and a half seconds. Yeah, it's just the weirdest thing ever. So um, we all, uh, well, we have two big buttons in the room, so so more than one person can uh, make a decision. And, uh, right. Janice Dickinson is is on hold, and I don't want the responsibility of the big yellow button, and so I gave it to Stench. And and Jack's got one. Yeah. Now I only have a cough button. Yeah. But I'm so afraid I might use that. <laughs> so are you guys ready on your buttons? We're ready. All right. Okay. okay. Here is Janice. Dickinson. Janice Dickinson. Hey, Janice. Are you guys kidding me with the three second delay? No. no. Are you, has Jamie gone gone a little bit ballerina on me? Yeah, this is my call. Yeah, really. <laughs> we had a lot to do with this. Well, you have a lot to do. I just have had my eyebrows done at Anastasia of Beverly Hills. So yeah, because you know why? She's a star plucker. Nice. Yeah, well, she has shirts that say that. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, Jack, don't reach for the button. It says star plucker. (laughs) I'm sitting outside of Anastasia's of Beverly Hills. So in the last month, I've had my eyebrows not only tweezed, waxed, plucked, and tattooed. I had Lasix and a facelift in the last month. Wow. Yeah. She does it all for the drugs. Uh, I, That's not true, Danny. I, I'm calling in because I had rock and roll dinner with Danny Bonaducci last night. Yeah. Oh, very Thank nice. you for bringing it up. We shot the uh, pilot last night for VH1, and she was the <laughs> life of the party. I'm sure. Oh, oh, oh. now let's, let's, let's back up a little. I was not on drugs. I don't do anything for drugs. I'm clean and sober. Which is terrifying. Right. Yes. I have optional surgery for the drugs. <laughs> Well, I mean, you guys, it, there, you, you, you just can't imagine how much fun it was. First of all, I want to just thank um, On Air. Let's get the three-second delay ready, boys. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, the gorgeous Madame Bonaducci. She was, she, Gretchen Bonaducci is the most fabulous. She can sing her little butt off. So she was doing duets with, what's her name, Danny? Terry Nunn from Berlin. Hey, Janice? Yes? Uh, why did we see your swimsuit area? What do you mean? Well, I heard uh, through the grapevine that you um, you showed everybody your swimsuit area, but without the swimsuit. <laughs> when you when you took oh, you your mean, seven feet I, of legs. Can I say snatch? No. No, there's, there's one. one. There's button. one. No, you can't say that. I said snooch. Yes. Uh, Unless you're saying the name of the Brad Pitt movie, no, you cannot say that word. Right. I said I'd chew. 
I said I chew. Uh, uh, here's the thing. Um, we heard that you, we saw your bathing suit area without the bathing the suit. The rumor was you were not wearing panties in that very short dress. You know, Danny, this is where rumors get started. First of all, rock and roll with Danny is going to be the hottest show <laughs> in the United States. Slash Except for there was no rock and rollers. Yes, there was. There was. The, we had Who? a little rock and roll. Who would you get? My bikini area is rock and roll in Southern California. It should be called like spaz. Okay, yes, you can some spaz rock. Rocks. And not only, not only did, does Danny Bonaducci live, and I'm not going to disclose the uh, address of his incredible Mediterranean home that is so tastefully de- decorated by IKEA Gothic. Right. By Gretchen. Gretchen, Gretchen, by Gretchen Bonaducci. She's a marvelous decorator. She's an incredible mother. I mean, they, they have these two I great throw kids. up. But, but no, no, no. You know what, Jamie? Eat it. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just that I know different things than you. Not about no. Gretchen. She's awesome. I am a train wreck. I kissed Gretchen last night because Danny got down on his bended knee and, and proposed marriage once again. Oh, Jesus. Bought her an incredible, from Stephen and Company. Oh, for the show. Bought, a, bought an incredible a diamond emerald ring. Jealous much, Jamie? No, <laughs> not at all. I would never want to be married to him. <laughs> yeah, but it's a nice ring. I have a secret crush on Danny. That's why I showed up. Wow. <laughs> That's good. This just gets better by the second. Oh, and does I told it. his wife, I told Gretchen, I said, listen, don't get jealous if I get, if I get a little friendly with Danny. She goes, that's where I put my foot down. <laughs> she did? Oh, yeah, you were out of the room. Awesome! Wow, chicks while, are digging me. Oh, Jamie, when Danny and when Danny and Gretchen left, uh, I was I was in their bedroom last night. I went through Danny's underwear drawer. Why? I would never <laughs> touch that oh, stuff. Why are you turning on me? Oh my God! Do you think I wouldn't touch your underwear? So far, you won't marry me. You won't touch my but underwear. You, nothing you don't know. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I have to squeeze this in. I'm leaving to go to New York to uh, plug book number two, Everything About Me Is Fake and I'm Perfect, which comes out next week. Yeah, because um, you're going to be on uh, talking about that in a couple of weeks, so we will please. get to that. Uh, don't plug it now, because then you sound like a whore. <laughs> well, I, you know, that word should be stricken from the FCC, Jamie. Someone should slap your little hands for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jess, we got to take a break. We got to go. Thank you so much for last night. I really appreciated it. Rock and roll with Danny. So I guess the big question is, were you wearing underwear? I was wearing my bikini wax from uh, Anastasia of Beverly Hills. So, okay. Yeah, that's right. my girl. Yeah, yeah, Janice delivered you, for the show, man. <laughs> I'd like to tell you a sad story. Please. Some people, they just give and they give until they can't give no more. Wow. Do we know any of those people? Some people love their community so much. Oh, yeah, I know one of these guys. They embrace it. They live it. They breathe it. They're proud of it. They wear shirts that say it. Right. As a matter of fact, I have to pick my daughter up at, I think it's called Fun and Fitness. She takes gymnastics, and I can't remember where the hell it is. Jack, would you happen to know the location of where my (laughs) daughter takes gymnastics? Burbank Boulevard between Buena Vista and Victory. Swear to God, not a setup. <laughs> Swear to God on my life. I believe I you. I took the shot with the mayor yesterday. Where do you shop? He knew exactly the corner. It's amazing. It is amazing. He's MapQuest of Burbank. Jack will not, uh, he will not take his, his mass fortune outside of this town. No, all he spends in this community. Right. He, he uh, you know, I mean, Jack, you live in and love and breathe Burbank. I buy all my baby socks at Target in Burbank. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's I other mean, targets he could go to. Right, right. But yeah, no. no, not our Jack. He uh, only drinks Burbank beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really, you have dedicated your life to uh, Burbank, and yeah. so it has been. There's a-, a store in Burbank that sells baby toys. The same exact store in Van Nuys, seven dollars. In Burbank. $1,100, but Jack <laughs> buys it there. Well, right, because as we know, Burbank has become the new Beverly Hills Absolutely. Of, of Los Angeles. Absolutely, and do you know how be, how it's become that? Uh, because of Jack. Right. right. We are getting a new P.F. Chang's. See? On really? Magnolia. Where? Attached to the mall. <laughs> On Magnolia. <laughs> And so Jack has been a big part of the success of Burbank, yeah, making absolutely. it uh, the, the new Beverly Hills of, of uh California. There you go. <laughs> um, and so it, it was a damn shame, that's all, when Jack found out that this weekend was a big Burbank parade. Right. And he wasn't invited. Because that's cr- craziness as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm sorry, c- c- crazy? Yes, exactly. <laughs> c- c- 
crazy. And yesterday, we talked to the mayor, uh, Mayor Stace, Stacy, as I like to call her. Uh, Jack and her, they, they had a nice little friendship happening. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, and she was going to see what she could do for our friend Jack. Right. Really, her friend Jack. She's right. the mayor. Right, right. So, Stacy. Yeah? What do we have thus far? Your Honor. Well, thus far, I've talked to the um, person in charge. Uh-huh. And Jack was in until I blew it. And I forgot <laughs> to say anything about her store. Once Upon a Page. He would have been in if only I would have mentioned that yesterday. Where Where is Once Upon a Page? I don't know where that is. It's... Is, is this Jack? On Jack Burbank Boulev- Boulevard? Is, is it on- over near uh, over near the Coral Cafe on Burbank Boulevard? God, he is good. Oh, ah! my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Have you ever seen anything? He's Rain Man of Burbank. Uh, yeah, it's kind of scaring me, now, Jack. Yeah, it's gotten almost weird. <laughs> Once Upon well, a Page? I think he just won himself a spot in the parade for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> but it's good. We got him in now. <laughs> well, we'll see. So is he in? He's in. Oh, yeah, Jack. Jack. Oh, my God. This is fabulous. I mean, we shouldn't have to work this hard, but. <laughs> now, is there anything special you're thinking about wearing to show that you're, in fact, Mr. Burbank? Burbank T-shirt, <laughs> Burbank phone knife. I don't know though. I maybe a Rod Roddy jacket. Oh, I wish I had one. Well, I know, but we could probably borrow one from the estate. Maybe. Well, how am I going to know who Jack is? <laughs> well, because well, he'll be the guy that knows everything about <laughs> Burbank. Hey, uh, Joanne. Yes. Hi, yeah. Joanne. I understand that you are the chairman of the Burbank Parade. Yes, I am. Uh, the mayor just told Jack he could be in the <laughs> the Burbank Parade. I don't know if she had the authority. Well, there's only one more condition. Oh. He must bring Isabella. Oh. oh. <laughs> what? What? Car- Why? Because he's not adorable <laughs> without her. What cartoon character is gonna take his head off in front of my kid this time? <laughs> he must bring Isabella. You? Did you hear what happened last time? One of the what was it? Puff. Uh, one of the Powerpuff Girls took her head off. And, and Isabella cried because she couldn't believe they took her head off. <laughs> She's nine years old and still drunk. She had a wonderful time with the Powerpuff Girls, yeah, and did. I'm sure that she would not be happy if she found out Jack came without her. Okay, um, you know what's funny about this? You know what I really enjoy? What? Jack, you really want to be in the parade, right? Uh-huh. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> You know my address. I'm a little bit out of Burbank, but you can find it. You're going to come pick the kid up and bring her home. And yeah, and not only that, he's going to have his own kid with him. Ah, it's a busy day for the Jackson. Oh, you should just give him Dante, too. <laughs> and a snuggly. Now one in front, one for the back. Now listen, we have a tremendous Grand Marshal, George Lopez, from the George Lopez Show. We love we George love Lopez. George. All of his... His TV family. Don't you think Isabella would love to meet all of Absolutely. Them? Yes. And Bugs Bunny's going to be there? Oh, nice. Oh, she loves Bugs loves Bunny. Loves Bugs yes. Bunny. Wow. All right, so what time does this parade start? The parade starts at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Oh, you just better sleep over Friday night, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> 11 a.m., and where does it start? On Olive Avenue and Keystone. Okay. And I'm sure Jack knows right where that is. I'm sure no, he does. I'm confident. Yeah. When he knew once upon a page, because I thought, oh, geez, he's going to look bad on this one, and yeah. kaboom! Jack, do you Let's know what's Jack. at Olive and Keystone? Let's ask Jack what kind of store. A Brazilian jean store, I believe. They sell, like, low-cut jeans. No, and a- no, no, no. Oh. Oh. Across the street. Oh, across the street. Oh. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah. Yeah. A coffee store is across the street. A copy shop where they make Xeroxes. That's correct. Dude. Yay! It's just eerie and weird. Once Upon a Page is a scrapbooking store. Uh-huh. We love scrapbooking we on this show. Yes, we do. So Danny can come um, make a scrapbook of Isabella's parade experience with the power pump. Yeah, you should really go, Danny, if you love Burbank. Well, you know what I'm thinking is, Jack, would you do me a favor and take some pictures of you and Isabella at the parade? I think you should go, Danny. Oh, no, 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 no. I think that Danny and Stench and Jack should be like the three amigos. When they do Mr. <laughs> Los Files, I'm in the parade and I'll take Lucy. And look, Lucy Ronald, Los Files. Ronald McDonald will be there. The oh, Funny you have Bunny to go. clowns will be there. Danny, you need to go and support oh, Danny, Jack. You, you, got, really, you, know what? you really I forgot how easy this is for me to do. Danny, that's, That's a great idea. I'll be there. <laughs>
We've got the biggest, best car for you. We have a Starsky and Hutch vehicle. Oh, oh. you love Starsky and Hutch. Remember, it was your favorite? My favorite. I can't <laughs> wait to be there. We already made the signs. Um, Mayor Stacy made sure we made a beautiful sign for you already. Okay, um, I got to tell you, in all sincerity. Yes. I will be happy to ride in the same car as Jack, a different car than Jack, whatever you want, as long as my name appears much, much smaller than Jack's. Oh, okay. yeah, that's true. No, It's got to say it. Jack Hyde, Mr. Burbank, if I have to make it myself. Yeah, that's true. It has to say Mr. Burbank. Mr. Burbank! Mr. Burbank! Mr. Burbank. Joanne, can we say that? Jack Hine, Mr. Burbank. As long as that's okay with Stacy, the mayor, that's fine with me. Stacy, your honor, can he be Mr. Burbank? Yes, he can. Yeah! Yeah! Oh We've changed your life. Wow, Jack, you're Mr. Burbank. Wow. Wow. You can pick up the signs when you grab his bell because I ain't going. <laughs> you have to go no, and I'm, support Mr. Burbank. I'm going to support my love for the Jackster, or I probably should call you Mr. Now, Mr. Burbank. Now, one more question. Yeah? Jamie, when are you going to join me? Uh, what yeah, Jamie. Uh, you know what? I'm getting exfoliated that day. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie, the parade's only two hours long, and you'll have oh, a great time. Yeah, um, you know what? I have anything yeah. else to do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's an arts and crafts there afterwards. I too. love oh arts and crafts. Oh, my God. It's a dream come true. And Jack, a, it's going to be a big a day. talent show afterwards. You'll have a great time. Are there snacks? There's snacks. There's food bowls. I need snacks. Does it still Start at the bar. It could. No, it starts at the scrapbooking place. <laughs> Where's she? What does Chadney's have to do with this? Chadney's is no longer out of there. business. Oh, you drank it. Dude, <laughs> they should be open for another few years. Just me and Jack. <laughs> We're okay. Oh, okay. We're okay. Not that All I right. The reviewing stands at Genio's, but that's afterwards. Oh, very nice. Very nice. My God. All right. So, uh, Joanne, again, the the parade where everybody can see Jack. I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Burbank. Burbank. Uh, again, it starts at what time and when and where and who and why? 11 a.m. in Burbank on Olive Avenue and Keystone. Mm -hmm. It goes for one mile uh, east on Olive Avenue to Lomita. Mm -hmm. It ends at George Isaiah Park. And there will be an arts and crafts fair, a talent showcase, and a car display at the park afterwards. You know what? Oh, yeah. uh, that is nice. Why don't you go I, do the I talent show? I went to uh, math college, <laughs> and if the parade's one mile long, yet two hours long, the <laughs> average pace is half a mile an hour. No, 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 no. It's a wonderful display, and Stacy is right up at the beginning. You get to see Mayor Stacy. Right. And remember, Stacy Murphy, your vote counts. Vote for Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> vote early, vote often. That's our motto. Now, Stacy, what are you going to wear so Jack can like match you as Mr. Burbank? I haven't decided yet. So when he picks out his outfit, have him give me a call. <laughs> okay. Because we're going to try to get something from the estate of Rod Roddy, one of those right. uh, shiny, sparkly things. And uh, we have a little bit of time on this, right? Until uh, Saturday. Right. We have like 24 hours or something, <laughs> and a t shirt shop of some kind yeah, should be able yeah. to make a Mr. Burbank yes. either sash or t shirt. Sash. sash. Yes. we got to have a sash. sash. Would rock. sash. sash. Now, usually you can find Stacy in her Humvee. Oh, I'm no, no, no. taking this a couple of kickbacks, are we, Miss Murphy? <laughs> yeah, we're in a convertible T bird this year. Oh, yeah. very nice, very nice. All right, you guys, thanks so much. We're very excited. I look forward to this, and uh, and we'll give you like a little update tomorrow on what, like how it's going with the outfit and stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Th you all very much. Thank you. No, thank you. We it's only justice it. being served. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. We'll see you all on Saturday. Thank you, Mr. Burbank. Yay, Yay Mr. Burbank!